All right, now some really cool stuff. So at what point does the character have to start, or the enemy has to do this? When the enemy, when I go like this, and you have to kind of talk to this whole thing in your head and say, what do I have to do? Well, when this thing, the squirrel with the cock gun, reaches a point where its uh, translation in X is greater than the enemy, that's when I need to do the switcheroo. Okay, so that's that's kind of easy to get your head around, I guess. So if the character is in back of the other, if the enemy, if you're the, the player is in back of the enemy, it needs to switch. Easy as saying that. So if he's in back of the enemy, uh, the transform is going to be greater because the enemy is going to be up front and the player is going to be in the back. So let's look at some coding that will try to uh, do that for us. Uh, so two more variables. Uh, veritable. And I'm going to call these orient. It helps me think. So orient transform. So I need to know where the enemy is equal to, and I'm only concerned is his position in X. Okay. So now I need to know where the player is. And I have a target. That's that perfect transform node out there. And it's going to be called orient target. All right, now, the good stuff. So I'm going to encase this in an if statement. If the orient, and I'm going to try to copy paste as much as I can to spare you my poor typing skills. If this is greater than this opening bracket then uh, my new rotation I'm going to copy this up here I already declared the variable, so I'm just putting the variable down here and making it a different variable. So if this happens, this becomes a negative vector. Just like that. And then I'm going to close it off. So that's a simple statement right there. If it's greater than that, flip. And I think that's it. So let's go save and try that out. Expecting a semicolon at the end, of course, semicolon. Okay, just make sure there's no other things out there. So let's go in here and jump on this little log. Flip and goes all the way around. <laughs> awesome. So there we go. We have a complete, and this would be great with a 2D player. Okay, and as far as 3D goes, this would be a really hard thing to pull off. I wouldn't mind trying it later on to try to get him to rotate in all axes, not just the, the X, Y axes like this, but this is still pretty freaking far out. All right, so there you go. We have the ability to look at the character um, in the X, Y axes going all the way across. And that's the look at script. So now based upon the look at script, I can now toss whatever at the character in all axes based upon the movement of this arrow. And that's going to be coming up next in the next series of videos.